famous hedge fund manager and short seller, Jim Chano, says investors should steer clear of two clean energy companies, Vestas Wind Systems and First Solar. Now, whether they're bulls or bears, investors are paying more attention to renewable energy companies and smart grid companies, so much so that we sat down with an in-house expert and asked which new companies will be coming to market, IPOs. Here's my conversation with Bloomberg New Energy Finance's Nat Bullers. There are a couple stateside to watch. You've got one in particular on biofuels called Kior, another one on solar thermal technology called BrightSource. And we know with BrightSource, there's some pretty well-known backers. Google is one of them. Google is not only an investor in uh, the company's equity, it's also an investor in its largest project. It's put in a substantial portion of capital to build a more than $2 billion solar power plant in the Southern California desert. You mentioned Kior. This is a biofuel company, and it's back by Vinod Kosla, who's a well-known venture capitalist. That's right. It registered to raise $100 million in an IPO. Is this about the size of deal, the size of transaction that you're seeing? In terms of the uh, the pure play venture-backed company listings, the $100 to $250 million listing range is normal. You see some larger ones coming out of Asia for some of the Chinese companies, many of which are relatively unknown in the U.S. There's also a lot of money, venture capitalist money, also private equity money, Money and public money going into smart grid technology. Why is that? A smart grid company is primarily about IP and less about hardware. Effectively, if you are a venture-backed smart grid company, you may be able to get your product to market with an order of magnitude less private equity or venture capital behind you than if you were basically a power generation company. So the smart grid companies, you say, are more about intellectual property, which we have to assume the venture capitalist community knows very well because they've dealt with this with com they've dealt with this with social media right that's absolutely right Google for instance was able to go public with a great deal less capital uh, from its venture backers than say bright source is going to require for fundamental reasons investing in the smart grid seems to make sense right as carbon gets more and more expensive as carbon gets more and more expensive, as there's generally a, a move to essentially remake what is the largest machine in the world, which is the electrical grid, and which, especially here in the United States, is a, a, a quite uh, uninteractive device. It's very much an analog system. What are some of the reasons that you're seeing investors be cautious about uh, a, investing? The main issue that we see, and in particular for solar energy, is a clawing back, a retroactive act to remove subsidy that had already been promised to certain projects. And we're not talking about small amounts of money here. We're talking about multiple billions of dollars of clawback in, in even any given year that has a materially adverse effect for a lot of investors who put down tens to hundreds of millions of dollars. So basically all renewable energy projects I know even in, in the U.S. or will face more headwinds in the U.S. if a federal tax incentive is cut in the following year That's in right. 2012, which it seems like there's a pretty big risk of that happening. That's right. I mean, we've got we've got some long-term policies in place that have to do with aspects of the tax code in the U.S., but we have another one that's been very effective in the last couple of years, which has been a cash grant doled out for every project that is commissioned and, and attached to the grid. If that's removed and the subsidy has to bounce back into a much more complicated and expensive tax market, that will, that will provide a, definitely a headwind for the sector. So headwinds do exist in the U.S., but it's worth noting that North America still has the largest amount of investment in renewable and or smart grid companies. In fact, last quarter, 80 out of 88 deals happened in North America, where Nat says there is more innovation.